The Economic and Financial Crime Commission, as we all know, came after the former governor of uh, former governor of Kogi State, which we all know how the matter went in Wusi some uh, a month ago, of which the present governor Ododo went ahead to rescue his boss. Now, the issue now is that we learned that Mr. Yahaya Bello have already committed himself to the hands of the EFCC after a lot of uh, uh, Maradona dribbling that happened. But let's come to look at this. The former Minister of Aviation who was, who was arraigned in the court over allegation of uh, misappropriation of fund. Anyway, we use a lot of English in order to quantify uh, criminals because uh, in a layman word, he stole some money. He in thief money. You understand? He was arraigned before the court for stealing public money. And the funny thing is that they granted him bail of 100 million. This guy does the work of a court. It is out. And at the end of the day, <laughs> my guy didn't have the chill. So if I can do away with 2.7 million 2.7 billion and then they arrest me before the court i pleaded not guilty and then they asked for a bail of 100 million so i can comfortably remove 100 million out of the 2.7 billion and give to them now i'm on bail we can drag the issues and uh, take it or leave it maybe one billion naira fallout i'm left with 1.6 billion naira if that's the case case died down and that's the end of it I think that we need to make some drastic laws that when somebody is being accused of taking what is not meant for him, you know, the person should be arrested and detained until the investigation is over. I don't even mean which investigation. The EFCC ought to even do all his investigation and know for a fact that this person committed this crime. So he's just going to court to provide those facts, not doing any further investigation. You've done that. You have established the fact that this person stole this money. So it's how to now convince the judge that this person actually stole this money is what is left for you. So you go to court with those facts that this person stole this money. And this person has to be under your detention of which you should go to life imprisonment or face death sentence. Just like we saw, you know, the National Assembly came up with this law of uh, capital punishment for drug-related issues. But wait a minute. I learned that uh, the case of uh, our jail president, Paul Abetinibu, has been reopened in the United States. So if the accusation on him partaking in drug trafficking in the United States back then, you know, that have resurfaced, if he has been found guilty, so what next? Are we going to be seeing a capital punishment for our president? To be to imprisonment for life. That is the original one. So since we want to amend this law to be more effective, then the punishment should be harder. So I am proposing that instead of imprisonment for life, it should be to be sentenced to death. I so move. And well, the United States of America, as it stands today, are trying the former president, Donald Trump, for some criminal charges, you know, bordering on uh, tax eviction, you know, lying and all manner, you know, which is facing right now, which has somehow, you know, dragged his potential of becoming the next president of the United States of America as the election comes in November this year. So, are we going to be having the same back and front if he's been found guilty? Anyway, I'll leave this take for you at the comment section. How do you see this? Let's have this conversation at the comment section. Thank you for watching.